section 2.4 continues our discussion with Venn diagrams. You can, you can have in your problem any number of sets. Uh, it gets a little more complicated when you have four and five and six sets, but you can still still do it. But we're gonna we're gonna talk uh, about one more. We're gonna do Venn diagrams with three sets and do some set operations with that. So to get used to the different places on our Venn diagram, uh, I've just got this nice relaxed little example. I've got my universe is the numbers one through fifteen, and you can see set A, B, and C that have been defined. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put each appropriate element one through 15 in its appropriate place on the Venn diagram, just to get used to the bigger drawing. So the, the way that I like to do this, the way that I think is handy and, and systematic is I'm just gonna start at the value one and we're gonna see what sets are each of these in. Now, just so that we're all doing the same thing, let's label it this way, set A, let's put here, set B, let's put here, and set C, we'll put down here. That's arbitrary. If you would, uh, on the test, if you define your sets in a different order, that's fine. Okay, uh, but I just wanna make sure we're all doing the same thing here. So let's go through this and let's see if we can figure out where, where these things are. So the number one, the number one is in set A, the number one is in set C. So where is that? Uh, let me do this. Uh, well, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna conflate things. Where is, a, uh, where is what A and C share, but is not part of B? Where would you describe that? Okay, so we've got from left to right, our first intersection right here, this first eyeball, right? So which part of this eyeball right here? Because this is what A and C share. Is it the left part of the eyeball or is it the right part of the eyeball? It's gonna be the left. I'm gonna put the one here. Why am I putting the one here and not in the middle? Because it's not in B. And that's where circle B overlaps as well. Is everyone tracking with me on that? All right, so I'm just gonna continue one through 15. In fact, I'm just gonna do a couple more and then I'm gonna have you finish the problem and then we'll, we'll check in at, at the end. So num the number two, and I've got everything in number order because I don't want anybody to go blind doing this problem. So the number two is only in B. I don't see it in anything else. So here's my B circle. Where in the B circle is it going to, to go? Is it gonna go in the, the, one of the eyeballs or is it gonna go out here? Out here, it's going out here. The number two is going out here because it's not in either of the other circles. Is that, is that fairly reasonable? Don't let me get away with it if it's not. Let me do two more. The number three, the number three appears to only be in C. So here's my C circle. Is this gonna go on the top or the bottom of the C circle? On the bottom, yeah, I'm gonna put the number three in this part again because it's only in C. The number four, the number four is in A, it's in B, it's in C, it's in all of them. So where's the number four gonna go on this Venn diagram? Yeah, the bottom of the eyeball, the center right here, the center little triangle or whatever you call the rounded triangle it does have a mathematical name because math people name, name everything, but we'll just call it the triangle in the middle and we'll put a four right there. So go ahead and finish five through 15, throw those in the appropriate part. And then I will, I will help you check your answers. And I'll give you like two minutes to do that.
I'm going to get started. If you're working, keep working. Don't let me bug you. I'll give you a second to check your answer. And if you have any questions about why you have something in a different place than I do, then we'll we'll see who who's right and who's wrong on that because I do make mistakes. All right. The number five appears to be only in B. So I'm going to put it in this part where the two is. The place where I put it is arbitrary, by the way. If you put it more at the top, it's just got to be in this space. The number six is not in any of the sets. So the six goes out here in the box. The same thing for seven. So I'm going to put seven right there. The number eight, eight is in A, eight is in C. So it's in what A and C share, but not B. So I'm going to put eight here with the one. The number nine is in all three. 10 is in A and B, but it is not in C. So here's the eyeball where A and B overlap, but it's not in the C part. So I'm going to put 10 right here. 11 is in only C. So I'm going to put it down here where the three is. 12 is in only A. So 12 is going to go in this part of the A circle. 13 is in only B. So that part is filling up pretty well. 14 and 15 are in none of them. So I'm going to put 14 and 15 out here in the box. Now, you might have put the 14 and 15 like up here. Aside from that, is there a question about why any of those numbers are in a particular region? Are we doing OK? All right, well, just to make sure we practice, because that's kind of the big, uh, the big chore with our Venn diagrams with, uh, with three sets. Uh, below is just another uh, exercise, same sort of thing. I brainstormed some Disney movies I could remember. So we've got a universe of some Disney movies. And then set A, B, and C are some subset of the universe. Uh, again, just this is arbitrary, but let's just make sure we're all doing the same thing. So when we're checking our answer, we feel good. Let's let set A be the one on the left, B be the one on the right, and C be the one at the bottom. I'm going to get started with the problem. If you're working, keep working. I'm not trying to rush you. Just want to make sure everybody feels engaged here. I'm going to do a little abbreviating because I write sort of, of large here. So what we've got here in my, uh, my universe is Bambi. Bambi is in all three sets. So I'm just going to put Bam right here in the middle. Okay, so we're done with Bambi. I'm going to cross them out because I will get distracted. So then we've got Cinderella. Cinderella is not in any of those. So we'll put Cinderella outside in the, in the universe, the box. Uh, Dumbo, again, Dumbo doesn't appear to be in any of them. So we'll put Dumbo out here. Frozen, Frozen is in set C only. So we've got Frozen. Then we've got Hercules. Hercules is in A and B, but it's not in C. So it's in the part of the eyeball of A and B that C does not share. So we'll put Hercules right here. Anybody uh, got something different so far? We doing okay? Okay, so then let me get my place again. Mulan, Mulan is in B only if I am reading right. So we'll put Mulan right there. And then Pinocchio, Pinocchio is in A and C, but it's not in B. And then Rat Ratatouille, Ratatouille, which is difficult to say, is in B and C. So uh, we'll put the rat right here. 
And then last but not least, Tarzan is in A only. So we'll put Tarzan right there. And we've got one more up. We can't forget that. So up is here in our universe because it's not in any of the sets. The purpose of those two problems, simply just to get used to what does each region on the Venn diagram with three sets represent. So far, do you feel so good about this? We doing okay. All right, then what, we're gonna do one more little thing and then we'll get to the big, the big thing for the day. So exercise two, I've done the same thing here that I did in previous sections. And I just, now that we've put elements in the Venn diagrams, now we're gonna have a Venn diagram and take the elements out. So answer A, B, C, and D with the uh, Venn diagram in exercise two, please. So firstly, the complement of B, uh, remember the complement of B is everything outside of B. So you can put your thumb over that pink circle and then everything that's left. So I've got one, two, uh, nine, 10, 11, and 13, it looks like. So one, two, nine, 10, 11, 13. Did I miss anything there in the complement of B? If you got something different, let's talk about it. I want you to feel super good going into this week that you're going to be apart from me and not see me. So B intersect C. So the uh, according to the colors on this, the pink circle uh, intersect with the black circle. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the blue circle, so don't uh, don't be distracted by that. So it's this eyeball right here. So that is going to be four, five, six, and eight. A union C, again, that says nothing about the pink circle. This time it's a union. So we're gonna take everything that is in A and C. So let's see if I can do this in number order without messing it up. So I've got one, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Remember, if you put something out of order, I'm not gonna mark it wrong. Okay, number order does help me grade it quicker and more, more accurately, but uh, that is my problem, not yours. So don't worry. Did I miss anything there? Always check, because I do make mistakes. The last one is A union B, but this time I'm taking the complement. So just gonna use my thumb again. I'm gonna cover up the blue circle and the pink circle. And so then the stuff that's left is just the two, the 11 and the 13. So the two, the 11, 13. If you needed to list out A union B first, then find the complement, that is perfectly fine as well. Uh, but I'm just taking advantage of the fact that everything's in my drawing. Okay, before I move on, any questions, comments, concerns? Well, the last thing we're going to do today in this section, and we're going to do we're going to do two examples each. I'm going to do two. You're going to do two. Uh, and and now that we're familiar with what the different regions mean, what we're going to do is we're going to answer this question. 
or we're going to determine the outcome here. What I want to know is if I, this relationship right here, A intersect B complement, I want to know, is that always equal to, no matter what the sets are, A complement union B complement? Now, in order to do this, we are not going to make up sets because for almost any relationship, you could make up a set and accidentally make up one that it's true for that particular set. What I want to know is, is this true no matter what? So we're going to be a little more general. So what we're going to do each, my example, your, your exercise, uh, we are going to label the Venn diagram like it's a puzzle, like we did a little earlier. And then we're going to see, we're going to determine what puzzle pieces uh, form A intersect B complement and what puzzle pieces form this. And we're going to see, are they always the same regions? Are they always the same parts? So traditionally, you can, you're welcome to label this differently, but traditionally, this is how it gets labeled. This is how the book will label it uh, when you are doing your homework in my math lab, is that this region over here that represents A only is region one. The reason Roman numerals are used is because most of the problems you do either have letters or numbers, and we don't want to we don't want to confuse this that these are elements of the set. Okay, these are labels for each of the regions. This is going to be region two. This is going to be region three, and then the border of the puzzle is going to be region four. If you've never used Roman numerals before. When a smaller number comes before a bigger one, it means subtraction. That's why the I before the V means four. That's really all you have to know about Roman numerals, okay, uh, for, for, for this class. Now, if you want to learn more about Roman numerals, take MGF 1107. We just talked about them. Uh, they're fascinating. Okay, so here we go. This is how you're going to do a problem like this. This is how you're going to do the one right below it when it is your turn. I'm going to draw, just for convenience sake, I'm going to draw a little T underneath this problem. I'm going to put the base of the T right under the equal sign to divide this problem into two parts. And so... Just like we did when we were doing this with sets, I'm going to start with my parentheses. So first I'm going to define what regions are represented by A intersect B. So if I asked you to point to the, the region or regions on, on that diagram that represent A intersect B, which one or which ones is it? It's just two, it's just that center eyeball. So if you're building the puzzle out of the pieces, you would pull the eyeball and say, this is the intersection, okay? So it's region two. Now what we're going to do, now that we know that A intersect B is region two, I want the complement of that. So I want everything else. So remember the complement is all the regions that are not region two. So what regions are not region two? One, three, and four. And since this only involves two sets, it doesn't really, these problems don't take long when you have two sets. Our other examples are gonna be, what do we do when we're, there's three sets? That's, that's where we're gonna go from here. The other side of the, the other side, okay. Well, I don't have any parentheses here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the complement of A. So what region or regions represent the stuff that is outside of A? Okay, I'm gonna disagree with one of those. Yeah, it's just three and four because region one and region two, when I glue those together, that makes the A circle. So the stuff outside of A is three and four. So whoop, whoop, whoop. You tracking with me? I know this is difficult. We're doing, we're thinking generally here. We're not you doing a specific thing. So this is hard. Okay. So if you have a question, it's valid. Please ask it. The next thing is I need B complement. Well, what represents everything outside of B? Okay. One and four. Now that I have the regions defined, what this side says is take all the regions that represent A complement and you're going to union them with all the regions that represent B complement. So A complement 
Union B complement. Union means just to smush it together. So just like with sets, I'm gonna smush these regions together. And we see that in the union, I'm gonna have region one. I'm gonna have region three. And I'm gonna have region four. And once you've done that for both sides of the equal sign, here is how you make your final determination. Do I have the exact same regions represented on the left and the right? Yeah, both of these expressions, A intersect B complement and A complement union B complement, both of these expressions are represented by regions one, three, and four. So I'm gonna write that this is always true. Doesn't matter what sets you created, you would always, when you use those sets, you would always have the same thing, whether you did A intersect B complement or A complement union B complement. Those mean the exact same thing. All right, so what I would like you to do, I'm gonna leave our little picture right here. Well, you have it on your sheet. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here for anybody on the video who hasn't put that down on their paper yet. I want you to do exercise three. It's the same sort of thing. Just changed it a little bit so that you get to go through the process. What's A union B complement? And is that always equal to, no matter what the sets are, A complement intersect B complement? All right, so I'm gonna just get started on this one. I don't want, uh, if you have any questions, I don't want you to struggle through it too much. So on the left side of this, again, I'm gonna start with the parentheses. I'm gonna start with A union B. Now, if you don't need to write this first step, set, step because you see what A union B complement, what region that is, that's great. That means you're a little further along and I'm, I'm loving that. So A union B is just regions one, two, and three glued together. So one, two, and three. So then now that I know what A union B is, we can find the complement. What's everything else except for regions one, two, and three? Four, okay? So A union B, the complement of that is this junk that's outside on the edge of the puzzle. Okay. So on the left side, no matter what sets you ever picked, 
A union B complement would be all of the elements that would be in region four. Now for A complement intersect B complement, same sort of thing. I'm just gonna copy this from above. A complement we saw up above was regions three and region four. And then B complement was region one and region four. So I'm just, uh, just re rewriting what we have up at the top. But this time, instead of unioning them like I did in this problem, I'm intersecting them. And what region do A complement and B complement have in common? Four, yes, we see it right here. There's a four right here. There's a four right there. That's what they have in common. So once again, whatever sets you picked, any elements in region four would be A complement intersect B complement. So the last thing, do I have the exact same regions represented on the left and the right side of this? Yes, so once again, just like the previous problem, we're gonna answer that this would be always true. They're always equal no matter what. Well, I've got one more problem and you've got one more problem for the day. This time though, we're going to do the same thing in a little bit more interesting of a circumstance. This time we're gonna have three sets that we have to, to deal with. So labeling this, I'm gonna have a few extra regions to consider. So that makes this even more fun. So as we've done before, I'm gonna label my Venn diagram A, B, and C. And so again, traditionally you would be welcome and you would come to the same conclusion to label this differently, but this is how you'll see it labeled in the book that this is region one right here. And we're just gonna go from left to right. This part right here, which we learned earlier from our problems, that is the stuff that's in A and B, but not C, that's region two. The stuff that's B only is region three. The stuff here that's in A and C, but not in B is region four. If you didn't guess it already in Roman numerals, a V means five, so that's my middle. And I mentioned if a smaller number comes before the larger, so if the one comes before a five, that's subtracting. If the smaller comes after, it's adding. So uh, a V and then an I is six. A V, I, I, that's seven. This is called an additive system of numeration in case you want to impress your friends. And then the outside of this is eight, V, I, I. So there we go. There's my eight regions. So for my problem, I'm gonna work this one with you. You're gonna help me out. We wanna determine is A union, parentheses, B intersect C. So we always do parentheses first. Is that gonna be the same thing as A union B intersect A union C? Okay, so we wanna see no matter what sets, is that always true or is that, is that something that would be not always true? So I'm gonna draw my little T here. So there we go. Uh, so, I mean, it just depends on where you're at to how much of this you're going to do, but I'm just going to assume that, uh, that you're still a little foggy on this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to list out the stuff that's in set A. What regions when I glue them together, make up circle A. Yep, so one, two, four, five. Fantastic. Now I'm gonna do the B intersect C part. So again, help me out when you're looking at that drawing. What regions represent what B and C have in common? Perfection, you're right. Five and a six. These two right here where B and C overlap. So I don't have anything else. So then the last thing I'm going to do now is I've defined what's in set A or what regions make up set A. I've defined what regions make up B intersect C. So the last thing to do is uh, I wanna know where are they, what are the regions that make up the union? Union means just smush it all together. So I just need everything. So I need one, I need two, 
I need four. I should have left myself more room. So we'll go down here. I need five and I need six. There's five regions. What I would like you to do is this. I would like you to do what's on the left. And on the left, just to give you a hint, you're gonna do the A union B in parentheses first, then you're gonna do the A union C in parentheses second, and then you're going to intersect those two things. If you get the exact same five regions, it's always true. If the regions are different even a little bit, then it's not always true. So I'm gonna give you about 90 seconds to go ahead and do that same thing for the right side of the relationship. A union B is made up of six regions and you can see them. It's one and two and three and four and five and six. Those are the six regions that when I glue them back together, make up A union B. So one, two and three, and then four, five and six. So then A union C, A union C is these six regions formed this way. So it's one and two four, five, six again, and seven. So one, two, and four, five, and six, and seven. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to intersect those two things. So uh, I don't have enough room to write it all out. I'm just going to write an intersection sign right here just to be shorthand. And so now what do those things have in common? Well, I see they both have a region one. I see they both have a region two. I see they don't both have a region three. They do both have a region four. They both have a region five. And they both have a region six. They don't both have a region seven, so I'm gonna leave that out. So there's my intersection. So now, final question. Are those the same exact regions that represent the thing on the left and the thing on the right? Yes, then so again, what you've just shown is you're actually, what you're doing is proving something, but proving is a scary word, so I didn't wanna use that. Okay, you are proving that no matter what sets you constructed, A, B, and C, uh, in whatever universe that the relationship on the left is the same as the relationship on the right. Last problem for us for the day. You are gonna, now all three problems we've done is always true. I don't remember if this last one is or not, but you're gonna do the same thing with this last relationship. Uh, determine, is this always true for any sets A, B, and C? So I'm gonna give you, let's see, we've got, I'm gonna give you like five minutes just because I want you to take nice care and then I will help you work the problem at the end.
on the left side of this problem, first we start with a complement. And so when I go up to my circle and I cover up A, the regions that represent everything outside of A are going to be 3, 6, 7, and 8. So I'm going to write that down. 3, 6, 7, and 8. Then I need B union C. So B union C is everything in both B and C. So B union C is going to be 2, 3, four, five, six, and seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Before I go on, anybody having problem identifying the different regions that compose these different operations? That's the essential thing. Last thing then is I'm going to intersect that's what this says right here. Let's intersect those two things that I've just found. So again, because I'm being mathematically lazy today, I'm just going to write an intersection sign right here. And what do those two, uh, those two regions have in common? Well, it looks like they both have a region three in common. I see that there and there. Uh, it looks like they both have a region six in common. I see that there and there. And last but not least, it looks like they both have a region seven in common. I see that there and there. So those are the three regions represented by the expression on the left. So again, my conclusion is going to be, if I get the same exact three regions, not two of them, not, you know, not those and other ones, if I get the same exact three, it'll be always true. If I get any difference at all, then it is not always true. So first thing I've got is B intersect C complement. Well, up at the, let me go back up here. B intersect C is just this stuff right here. I'm just gonna shade it. B intersect C is the stuff that I've just shaded red. So the complement of that is gonna be everything else. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, seven, and eight. A, we defined previously in the other problem, but I'll just, I'll slide this back up just so we're all certain. A is everything in this circle A, one, two, four, and five. And then the last thing I'm doing is I'm unioning those two things together. So I'm taking the A region, I'm unioning it, I'm gluing it together with the B intersect C complement. And so when I union this, I've got region one. Well, we can already see, I'm going to finish it, but we can already see right now, it's not always true, right? There's no region one over here on the left. But I'm gonna finish this just because we've done all the work. So then I've got two and then there's region three and then region four is represented and five and seven and eight. So the answer is this is not always true. Now I could find sets that would be true because notice there is region three and region seven on both sides. So if I accidentally made sets, that were in only region three and seven, you could make it something that looked like it was true. And that's why we're doing this in the very general framework. Well, 